This episode is brought to you by Rune. Rune 1.8 is an immersive new music experience featuring a new look, new intelligence, and new features designed for music fanatics. Click the link in the description box below for more information. We'll start this video with an album recommendation. I don't often do this, but this album has really blown me away. It is called Leviathan, and it is by Robert Fripp and The Grid. Now, you might remember The Grid as perpetrators of that dreadful single called Swamp Thing in the 90s. But generally, their music isn't really like that. Robert Fripp, of course you'll know, from King Crimson, and also for playing with David Bowie, especially on Scary Monsters. This is an ambient album in the same vein as Robert Fripp's work with Brian Eno. But it does build and build and build and build and build and build until there are beats in the maybe the last, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of this record. It's, it's just wonderful. It is glorious. So I thoroughly recommend this, even though we're not talking about CDs today. Here is a piece of vinyl, two pieces. This is a double EP from an electronic music outfit called Artifact. This is called Kinship. This is actually very hard to find now, even though it only came out in 2017. Now, one of the reasons I still buy vinyl might actually surprise you. If you're an electronic music fan, you'll already know this, but if you're not, you won't, is that many new electronic music releases only come out on streaming services, maybe as a download and as a vinyl issue. There is no CD. And this is common practice in the sort of club music or home listening electronic music world. So very often, if you want a physical format, and I very often do, vinyl is the only choice. Now in the rack behind me, you will see a Gato Amp 150. That's powering a pair of Wilson TuneTot loudspeakers Prior to the Gato is a wired for sound phono stage called the PH1. And then on top of this Hi-Fi Racks rack, there is a new turntable from Project who are celebrating 30 years in the business this year. And this new turntable is called the Debut Pro. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at that turntable in more detail whilst also talking about some electronic music, some more electronic music that I really, really dig. And also, you know, why I still listen to vinyl. Regular viewers of this channel will know that I have been using a Technics SL1210GR turntable for the last year and a half. It's a 1500 euro table and fitted to its tone arm is a Autophon 2M Black cartridge, which is a $500 cartridge. So it's a $2,000 setup. You can see it behind me, just if I lean like that a little bit. But for all the SL1210's prowess as a workhorse turntable, it's strong, it's heavy, it's just great to get hands on with. For all of that, it's not frustration free. There are quite a few niggles that I have with it. And today I wanna to talk about how the new project turntable overcomes some of the gripes that I have with the Technics. But because turntable setup and playback is such a hands-on experience. I think how much pleasure we derive from using that turntable goes much further than its ability to audibly wow us. Firstly, a turntable has to look good because you're gonna have to look at it because it's, well, for me, it's right in front of my listening position right here. I look at this turntable all the time when I'm playing records. One thing I like, well, actually two things I like about this project turntable. Number one, it has nice clean lines. The edges are nice and clean, and there is a distinct absence of project branding. So there's no brand name on the plinth. There's no model name on the plinth. In fact, you wouldn't really know who made it if you hadn't unboxed it yourself. I like that. 
and a turntable has to feel nice when you're using it. And I don't think that's super easy when you're a manufacturer working to a reasonably low price point. Now, my number one pet peeve with some affordable entry-level-ish turntables is that you have to lift off the platter, move a belt, and then put the platter back to go from 33 to 45 and back again. That drives me crazy. Maybe it doesn't drive you crazy, but I'm just talking about how I feel slash think about those turntables. So for example, that would be a particular annoyance if I moved from that Artifact EP, which I showed before, which spins at 33 RPM, to this, an Orbital EP from a couple of years ago, which spins at 45. I bought this on Record Store Day because it has an exclusive remix of Impact on here, which is only available on this 12 inch EP. And that's another reason why I buy records is because sometimes it's the only place to get certain tracks. On the Technics, we have two very nice little press buttons to change the speed. But on this new project, there's something even nicer. It's a little toggle switch, which sits at the bottom left of the plinth. And you move it left for 33 or right for 45 and in its middle position, it's off. And this little toggle switch is so nice to use. It just feels lovely. And that's one of the great things sometimes of really beautifully engineered products in general, is if you just want to like flip a switch just for no reason other than the satisfaction of flipping that switch. And I feel that way about this little toggle switch on this project table. When setting up a turntable, it is critical that you get it level, otherwise it won't sound right. And I use a ball bearing to do that. And my second pet peeve of entry-level turntables is non-adjustable feet. Now the Technics does have adjustable feet, but they're plastic, they feel a bit cheap. I don't really like that. The Project, well, it actually has two advantages over the Technics. Number one, the feet are metal and they feel really nice to turn. Number two, there's only three of them, which makes leveling a turntable much easier. Another album that is not available on CD, but is on vinyl and on streaming services, is this one. This is by an outfit called, well, it's one guy, called VC-118A. Not very catchy. The album's called Spiritual Machines. I've only just discovered this. For electronic music fans, this is out on Delsin. This is kind of like ambient techno from the 90s, kind of. I'm always on the lookout for that kind of stuff because I love it. Basically, strong on melody, but with twitchy rhythms. I guess they're the two defining features of electronic music that I like the most when listening sat at home. And yeah, it's only on vinyl, it's not on CD. So another reason to kind of, yeah, just spin records. My third gripe or pet peeve with entry-level turntables is the app sorry, some entry-level turntables, is the absence of VTA adjustment. Now, what that means is, is can you lift the back of the tone arm? Can you drop the back of the tone arm to ensure that when the tone arm is sitting on the record with the cartridge here, it's at roughly 90 degrees to the record surface? Now, I say roughly because some, I guess, vinyl obsessives think that the, I think it's called the rake angle, should be, I think it's 92 degrees? I'm not sure, Google it. But anyway, for most people, 90 degrees. Now, on the Technics SL1210GR, we do get that, but it's, you have to adjust it using a plastic wheel. Plastic, it just feels a bit cheap. I actually don't think it goes low enough. I wish it would go further, but it doesn't. Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters because if we want to change the cartridge on the turntable, Cartridges vary in height. So obviously if we have a taller cartridge, we're going to want to lift the tone arm at the back a little bit. 
So that's important. We get that on the debut pro from project. We get VTA adjustment. It's also in a very nice metal mount. There isn't very much plastic involved in the, the tonar mount or where it joins the turntable plinth. So it, it feels nice to use. But as a bonus, we also get azimuth adjustment, which is very unusual at this price point. Now what azimuth is, is the sort of left and right tilt of the car. Because if you don't have that correct, you won't get the right channel balance. In fact, you'll get an imbalance if it sort of leans more towards one channel than the other. Because as the needle moves this way, and then this way, no, that's not right. Like CDs, vinyl promotes active listening. So you put a CD on and you're committed. There's no skip to the next album or browsing around on a streaming service or inside Rune for the next track or the next album. None of that, you, you are committed, you're locked in. And I think that promotes active listening. As in, you are doing nothing else but listening to the album that's playing. But one of the downsides of CDs is you can still skip next track, next track. You can't do that with records. So when I put on a side of this, this is Global Communications remix album called Remotion. Very hard to get this is. And I guess that's one of the other things about, one of the things I like about vinyl. It's the thrill of the chase. This is super easy to get on CD. There's no effort, just look it up on Discogs, but this is expensive on Discogs. I bought this in Japan at Disc Union in Tokyo. And when I want to listen to it, I just want to put it on and do nothing else. Just want to sit there and just sort of float away. This is like ambient, ambient techno-ish from the mid nineties, but very slow. I love this record. And that brings me to my next pet peeve, which I, which I think is really more specific to the Technics. So the way that the, the Technics lid flips up, it only comes up sort of halfway, if you like, or maybe 60 degrees. So when you, you know, take a record out of its sleeve and you wanna put it on the turntable, you have to kind of make sure you dodge the top of the lid. And you don't have to do that with the debut pro from Project because its lid flips all the way up to 90 degrees. So you can just go donk. It's the little things that matter sometimes. One of the Technics SL1210GR's killer advantages, its detachable head shell, which means it's easy to swap out new cartridges, is also its, I guess, Achilles heel in some ways because it's not a one piece tone arm. And the project is a one piece tone arm. It's 8.6 inches long. I think it's made from aluminium in Europe and then aluminum in the US. At least that is the inner tube and that is to keep resonances to a minimum because you don't want your tone arm resonating. But the outer shell is carbon and that's for rigidity. Another thing that I really like about vinyl playback, and this is also true of CD playback as well, is that when I'm belting out something like Matrix Man's Sect 2 Acid EP, there is no corporation tracking my listening habits. Vinyl playback is private. By the way, this is a killer EP. This is all 303 based music, it's four tracks. If you like Richie Horton's Plastic Man stuff, check this out, it is on streaming services. Absolutely superb. Another pet peeve specific to the Technics, this one actually, is that the tone arm drop mechanism is sometimes super janky. So sometimes I drop the lever and it'll go gadunk and then move down slowly. I don't like that. Whereas when I do the same thing, put a record on and then lower the needle onto the groove, it's buttery smooth on the Project Debut Pro every single time. And also the, the tone arm lever is all metal. It feels nice to use. 
Of course, when you're comparing a belt drive turntable like the Project to a direct drive turntable like the Technics, it tends to bring out the, the fundamentalists, the, the dogmatic people who will tell you the only thing to buy is a direct drive turntable or the only thing to buy is a belt drive turntable, which is absurd because if you buy a very high-end belt drive turntable and compare it to, I don't know, a $300 direct drive Pioneer, which one do you think is going to sound the best? It ain't going to be the Pioneer. There are no absolutes in audio. You will meet people who will try and tell you this. That's because they've got a direct drive turntable and that's why generally they're evangelizing direct drive turntables. It's about them. It's not about you, it's about them. So ignore them. Ignore the evangelists and the fundamentalists about anything. Be pragmatic, try to remain pragmatic. A couple of things to know about the project turntable is that the motor assembly is decoupled from the rest of the plinth to stop vibrations created by the motor from leaching into the plinth, going to the tone arm mount and then down the tone arm into your cartridge because the whole, I guess the whole game of designing a turntable is to minimize the number of vibrations reaching the cartridge. And the second thing to notice about the Debut Pro, which is also related to vibrations and resonances and things like that, is that the platter is made from aluminium in Europe, aluminum in the USA, but there's a kind of like a, a rubber, well it's not rubber, what's it called? A thermoplastic elastomer ring that sort of fits on the underside of that platter. And that's to minimize resonances and also to minimize, can't even say resonances, that's to minimize resonances and also wow and flutter. So the kind of woo sounds that you know, cheap turntables give you. Lastly, the project turntable is made in the EU. The Technics is not. But the reason I point out all of these sort of build quality differences or design decision differences is that the project turntable sells for half the price of the Technics. It sells for 750 euros in Europe. That's half the Technics' 1500 recommended retail price, which is astonishing, really. And it comes with a factory fitted cartridge, a new cartridge developed in collaboration, I believe, with Autophon. It's called the Picket Pro. I think you can buy it separately for something like 129 ish euros. And to my mind, and I'm guessing here, but this is generally true, and I think this is probably more true of more affordable turntables and more expensive ones is that the cartridge dominates the sound quality of that table. But it's also supported by the quality of the tone arm, the tone arm mount, and then the rest of the turntable. So it's not exclusively the cartridge, it's the other things that support that cartridge. So let's talk about sound quality differences between the Debut Pro with its Picket Pro cartridge factory fitted and then the Technics SL1210GR with the Autophon 2M Black fitted by my dealer to that head shell. Let's talk about those sound quality differences. I just want to qualify what follows with some other vinyl choices because I obviously don't just listen to electronic music. And for this particular review or video coverage, whatever you want to call it, I listen to a whole bunch of different sort of, I guess you call them rock and roll records or rock records or what are they? Yeah, mainly, I guess, old man rock records, actually. The first one is this. This is Crazy Horse and Neil Young's best live album. This is the most money I've ever spent on a used record. 90 euros this cost me. I bought it about a year ago. And yeah, I, lo I love this album so much and it's a beautiful gatefold, kind of. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so Weld. One thing newcomers to vinyl don't know or aren't necessarily aware of is that the majority of modern vinyl records are pressed from high-res digital files. But this one is not. This is the Intervention Records release of Matthew Sweet's Girlfriend. This is made with analog transfers from the master tapes. Great sounding record, great album. That's Tuesday Weld. This album was originally going to be titled Nothing Lasts, but Tuesday Weld's estate said no to that. And then just out in the last what, month or so is the Record Store Day reissue of Lou Reed and John Cale's Songs for Drella. This is 
pressed across three sides. It sounds wonderful. So from the Project Debut Pro, we get a more forward presentation, better extension up top, more front to back soundstage depth. And I noticed that on both the Orbital EP and on the Matthew Sweet double album. But then playing the Global Communication Remotion remix album, that exposed the project's slightly better talents with separating layers in the music. And that sense of better organized musical layers also shows up again on the Lou Reed and John Cale album, but so too does more evident textual information, so the surface of instrument sounds, if you like, and then tone. I think tone is better on the project table than on the Technics with the Autophone card. Going back to that Matrix Man Techno EP, the project gives us a slightly punchier low end, better sub bass reach, and those combine to, to really make us feel like the, the project table has the better handle on the sort of twists and dynamic shifts of that sort of acid house. And for me, it's just, yeah, more exciting, more dynamically punchy from the project than my Technics. The project blows the Technics out of the water. The project destroys the Technics. Nope. That's not true. The differences that I'm talking about here are pretty small. They're small. But one difference between the project table with its factory fitted cartridge and the Technics turntable with its Autovon 2 in black is that the project turntable has, a, I guess, a greater sense of avidity. It just sounds more alive. It sounds more sprightly. It has more verve, you know, more energy. And I noticed that from playing back that Artifact, Kinship EP. You know, it, ha it has more bounce. It sounds keener, so I guess more eager to please, if you like. And that contrasts the Technics as sounding maybe a little bit richer and maybe a little bit more refined, but sort of lacking in that excitement factor that I look for. And I'd quite happily trade a little bit of richness and refinement for that excitement and that verve and that vitality from the sound of my music playback, especially with electronic music. How does this project turntable compare to other turntables? I'm really sorry, I have no idea. I've only done the comparison with the Technics here. Does my preference for the Project Debut Pro over the Technics, the more expensive Technics with the more expensive cartridge, does that mean that the Debut Pro is the best turntable under a thousand euros? I haven't heard any more turntables under a thousand euros, let alone the majority of them in order to make that call reliably. It's just, this is, this project is a very, very, very good turntable. There might be better turntables out there, I don't know. But I'm, I'm very happy with this one. I think it's wonderful to use. It's nice to look at. It feels good. It sounds terrific. It's sound staging for me is far more holographic, to use a cliche, than the Technics. It's more engaging for me. And it just reminds me that I guess I've never been happy with my Technics turntable. I like it. I like its sort of DJ industrial factor, but it just doesn't move me in the way that this project does. So if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. Maybe think about sharing this video out on social media. If you like my attitude towards High-end audio that also includes vinyl playback. I play a lot of records, I buy a lot of records because I love buying records. So if you dig all of that, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.